Well, hi, here we are again. Looks like we're getting ready for a brand new moon. Look at over here. It's just coming in in Virgo. Very late degrees. And we have over here a little Pisces coming out. Uh, that's where the focus is right now. now. I say little because of the fact we only have six minutes of arc left in Pisces before we shift over to Aries. Notice that? 29 Pisces 54. So it's very little left to do with Pisces. So for the late degrees that we're seeing here, I would say that pretty much things that we want to start over or anything we want to correct to make make different amends with might be a little bit too little too late so i would say eh, wait a minute wait a while wait till the planets make their shift because they're going to you know as soon as this shifts over into aries now uranus is going to take over and that's going to be a huge huge move because of the fact that that's bringing in that martian energy and that martian energy over here in the eighth house of secrets uh is uh, in the sign of secret a sign of scorpio is really intense it's in its own power right now so its own power position speaking of which if we look at the houses as we would uh, on a, on a uh, open enemy basis this would be our open enemies house seven and if we started with the open enemies it, of course as enemies they'd be house one their house two their house three their house four their house five their house six their house seven us their house eight their house 9, their house 10, their house 11, their house 12 of secret secret doings. Now the thing is, is that when we look at our enemies' houses right now, such as Syria, we can notice that Gemini is in their 10th house, if we count it around that way, and that Mercury is exceptionally strong here in Virgo. It's in its own sign, and not only that, it's in its exaltation. And those very late degrees tell me that the Syrian crisis was probably planned for the last few months. I don't know that it's really the idea of that that uh, uh, that little video that was put up. This is way over here in the 12th house, kind of hidden. Uh, it's the sixth house of theirs, our 12th house of whatever. I, I got a feeling that this was long in the making. Long, this just added fire, fuel to the flames, you might say. So this whole thing with Syria looks like it's been around a while. They've been planning this for a while. And I really think it's a dictatorship. I think it's a concept where they're trying to get into full rule and get the democracy people out so they can go back into another dictatorship. Uh, they certainly don't want the U.S. there touting freedom when they're so used to, you know, just <coughs> ruling the mess, so to speak. Anyway, here we have uh, the charts, and this is what we're looking at. A lot of Pisces right now, the first house is exalting that Venus here in Leo, saying, wow, should be nice if we could have some fun. But you know, the idea of the cost of transportation right now with Jupiter as the second ruler here and its detriment, costs are way too high. We're having a problem with that. And so the fun we're looking for is not quite as much as it could be, being the fact that Leo, the sun, is in Virgo. And Virgo, of course, receives Venus in its fall. So that would say that no matter how much fun we think we'd like to have, it's just not as powerful as it could be. Now, get what? We're going to get to see this move in a couple of days. And by next week, the sun will go into Libra, 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 however you guys say that. And when it does so, we'll have a mutual reception with Venus and with the sun in each other's sign. This could be a good time to start new businesses. Right now, I don't think it would be because of these late 29 degrees in the 10th house would tell us, not a good idea. Too little, too late. And the ruler of that is in detriment down here in routines. Nah, I don't think it'd be a good thing at all to start anything new. You want to wait till you get new degrees, a little earlier degrees, so you can start something new. Also, starting new, uh, the moon is starting to wax. So now is a good time to start considering when you might want to do something. So we get that, uh, get that waxing moon going up to that first quarter. That means it's growing in light, and chances are it'll do a good deal of... Uh, business for us. So the thing to do here is just to wait, bide your time, and try to get things together in a more positive light. Right now is a good time to uh, run your plans past a, a Virgo. They can give you some concepts and probably some contingency plans. Shoot a few holes in it where uh, it makes it a little stronger for you. I would definitely see, uh, seek a Virgo's opinion at this point in time. They're in a very good place. Get that sun, new moon, and a Virgo, even at the vertex here. So the whole concept looks very powerful in their ideas. We're still in a mutable chart, so anything can happen. Weather-wise, I think as soon as uh, we see this shift, we'll see the cooling temperatures uh, for the next couple of days. But when that Uranus takes place back in and that Mars energy kicks over and the sun goes over that uh, seventh house and reflects that first house, I think we'll see uh, probably another heat wave coming in and probably midweek, uh, uh, mid midweek of next week. So overall, uh, weather-wise, it looks like we're going to stay hot. Uh, fires are breaking out everywhere. We're seeing a lot of that. And uh, just heat, 
heat and heat. Uh, anyway, this is where we stand today. Mutable chart. Things are changing. Wait. Uh, it'll be pretty soon. It'll be time to make some new changes. And when it does, take full advantage of those moments. All right. That's it for this week. Thanks for tuning in. I'll uh, see you guys next week.